Hey guys, how you doing today? Pig Potty here. I'd like to do something different today. I want to talk about the 22.0 patch notes that are coming out tomorrow, November 30th. Typically, I do Battleground stuff on my stream and my YouTube channel, but today I want to talk about the Mercenaries changes. I play Mercenaries a lot off stream, and I really do like the mode, so I want to take a stab at seeing if I can give my opinions and predictions on how these new heroes will be. Uh, we're getting three new heroes right away with tomorrow's patch. And then one more, uh, Valera, will be part of the Tavern Pass with the new expansion. So let's jump right in. And again, um, I was like on the fringe of the top 200 mercenaries uh, for like a day before I fell back to Earth. So I'm not a high skill player. I'm not like a top guy, but I just think it's fun and I want to take a stab at, you know, giving some analysis. So first up, we have Valera Sanguinar. She is a legendary fighter. Uh, I'm going to use the colors for most of my analysis because everyone knows the colors. She's a green mercenary. She's a blood elf. I don't believe there's any blood elf synergy at this time. Her first ability is Sinister Strike. It's a three speed ability. You gain plus 10 attack this turn and attack the lowest health enemy. If you combo it, you also gain stealth. Stealth has not been a part of mercenaries. Only, I'm pretty sure only uh, scabs, cutter butter, can use the stealth mechanic. So it's interesting to bring in more stealth. It's tough to have an ability that you cannot target. This always attacks the lowest health enemy. Um, I've been wanting uh, a couple more proactive green mercenaries to enter uh, the system because I feel like a lot of the most powered comps right now are the caster-based comps, the blue ones. They have the nature comps, you have shadow comps with Vol'jin, you have holy comps with Anduin. So I'm always on the lookout for a more proactive uh, green fighter mercenary. But not being able to target makes this a little strange. I think Vol'jin has naturally very low health, so this is probably a... <laughs> can be used reliably to target Vol'jin in those opening rounds. Um, it's speed 3, so it's sort of a coin toss whether or not this will go first or Vol'jin's slow will go first. So it's... I think it's cool. I think uh, plus 10 attack on the 13 base means 23 attack to start off, which is a big hit if you can hit Vol'jin. But it isn't consistent. Also, you can set it up so you consistently gain stealth if you choose certain mercenaries that slow things down. So perhaps you start this off with Grom. You can uh, use his two speed ability to slow Vol'jin down. And then you use Valera's Sinister Strike to really lay into Vol'jin. Her next hit is Ambush, which does deal 10 damage if the Merc. If this mercenary was stealth, you will 25 instead. So that's a big hit, and this one you can target. Uh, depends on how how consistently you can get her stealth to activate. 25 is a lot, though, and if you can put that onto a blue guy, it's 50. That means she really does feel like a weapon used to target blue mercenaries um, to be sort of a proactive mercenary against them. End of Knives, and I want to point out here, this is her third ability, but none of them are shown to have cooldown. So unless that's like a typo that they made a mistake, I think she is the first mercenary to have no cooldowns at all. Uh, Fan of Knives deals seven damage to all enemies. Your other mercenaries are three speed faster next turn. So if you know, if you play mercenaries, uh, if you play PvP, you know that speed manipulation is the name of the game. This is very much like Karen's uh, Endurance Aura. Except you don't have to activate it that turn. It's a it's an ability that lasts next turn. Why is my Siri activating suddenly? Um, <laughs> and so it's a uh, speed manipulation, and then you can still use her abilities the turn of. So that has a lot of potential. I think that might be very strong, especially because you can start the fight with it. Uh, I could see you using this to speed your team up in uh, response to. Malfurion speeding his team up on turn one. Um, she might be more situational. Uh, there's some inconsistency problems with her not being able to target her Sinister Strike. But um, 
she has the potential to be a very, as I said, a very uh, proactive green fighter mercenary. Her equipment is, uh, the first one is Hidden Paths. It's a passive. Whichever, whenever a friendly character loses stealth, give them plus six attack. I think the use here is limited. It works for her and it works for scabs, but so far that's it. I think, unless I'm missing somebody who has stealth, but I don't believe that I am. Um, Shadow Dagger, Ambush is three speed faster and gains death blow, gains stealth. So this makes Ambush seem very, very strong. It comes out quickly. You can, um, with the big damage, if you can consistently get kills with it, you can sort of chain her stealth, uh, keep her alive indefinitely. Um, that said, you know, it's 25 damage. It's, you're not always going to have somebody low on health. Um, so it depends how consistently can you continue to activate a death blow. But I think even if you get it once or twice, that might have, uh, you know, a lot of upside, a lot of power. Her final ability is Unnatural Smoke. While this Merc has stealth, friendly characters are four speed faster. Speed manipulation is always strong, though. So I think you will definitely see her attempted to be used. Moving on to Sky Admiral Rogers, an epic blue caster, a human. <clears throat> I think that humans, uh, the human synergy is needs to be expanded, so I'm glad to see another human come in. Uh, Varian, particularly, is a minion or a, a mercenary who relies on the human uh, synergies, but they just have not been enough to make him valuable, so maybe this will uh, bring him into the fold. The abilities here are, uh, the first one is Sky Guard, gain 5 attack and attack an enemy. If it's a pirate, gain immune while attacking. I don't think the pirate uh, tech means much. The pirates did not show any potential. Uh, so that's meaning us, but simply gaining 5 attack and attacking is good. It means you attack for 16 and on the first turn. That can be good. <clears throat> Rogers is unique in that Sky Guard... Uh, is an attack. Blue casters usually do direct damage. The only caster I can think of who attacks is Guff. Uh, so that's a unique ability for, or a unique uh, quality of Sky Admiral Rogers. Master Tactician is, I think, the, uh, the real shining ability here for Rogers. The Speed 2 so is a fast ability with a, one cooldown, but it deals 12 damage to an enemy or it restores 12 health to an ally, so it's already flexible. But that targeted uh, unit goes next. So you can use this to speed up any slow abilities your teammates have. My first thought is you can use this on Diablo to make his uh, fire stomp go right away, even faster than with Karen. That's very, that's very strong. Anything else that's a uh, very slow but very powerful ability, this could activate very quickly. It really opens up those slow abilities. You could also use this to disrupt combos for your opponent. So you could make Samuro attack first before anybody can deal damage. You can make uh, Guff use his combo, his nature combo spell, um, go first before, say, before Malfurion goes. So this could either activate your own stuff or disrupt your opponent's things, which is very strong. All right, next up is Firing Position. It's a speed six ability. You deal 25 damage to all enemies that have already acted. So this, uh, I feel like this is meant to punish all of the speed manipulation and abilities speeding up. This really, uh, it will probably work on Vol'jin and any shadow abilities that he speeds up. The problem that I see is that if you want this to go last, or at least later in the fight, your opponents can sort of predict that and maybe focus down Sky Admirable Rogers, Sky, I mean, Sky Admirable Rogers, uh, they have to survive long enough to use this ability, but a 25 damage AoE is very strong. That's similar to the output of Diablo's Fire Stomp. If it hits all four guys, that does 24, this does 25. So strong AoE, uh, again, it'll have some issues on how can you maximize its effectiveness? Can you safely do it without Rogers dying? But 25 damage AoE is definitely strong. The equipment, uh, Swashbuckling Sash, which sounds like a, something a pirate would use, but 
the other qualities here make uh, Rogers seem like it's more of a like a Stormwind Admiral. Maybe not. I don't know. It's a human, not a pirate. I feel like it's time they can make two synergies, right? Like they could make human pirate. Edwin is a human by lore, but in the game he only counts for pirates. It's time. They could do it. Um, so anyway, yeah, Skyguard gives an additional plus five attack. This makes Skyguards feel very similar to Valera's number one attack, except you can target it. And you can just stack damage every turn. You can get 10 damage additional a turn and still attack. Uh, so if you want Rogers to be just straight up DPS, I think you can do it. A ship spell and Master Tactician deals four more damage and makes the target go last. So I this can be, uh, you can make it delay like a big heal. You can delay the first part of a combo. You can like delay Zyrella before Samuro goes. You can delay Malfurion. I wonder if you equip this, does it make your friendly units go last? Because it says deal more damage and makes the target go last. Maybe it only affects that part. If it does also make your friendly units go last, it takes a lot of the usability away from this ability. So it's sort of a choice on how you want this hero to, to be used. I think I like the ability of speeding up your teammates too much to limit yourself that way, but I guess we'll see how it, how it plays out. Last is Scout Spyglass. It's a passive. After this Merc attacks, deal four damage to all enemies. So this, this feels like an alternative to the first equipment. You can give more attack to attack a single unit, or you can use an AoE. I think this is better, especially because it deals critical damage to pirates. So that's it's an added bonus. So Admiral Rogers feels like a big time damage dealing unit with also this a tactician ability to really manipulate the boards and really mess up your opponent's game plan or mess up or, or really uh, activate your own game plan. So I think Rogers looks very strong. <clears throat> Next up is Trigor the Lasher. Um, it's a beast. It's a red protector. Uh, the beast comp has really, it's been limited to Rexar, uh, Crush and the monkey Mukla. So maybe he'll factor in there. His abilities, his first one is uh, speed seven, attack an enemy. If this took damage this turn, deal 12 damage to a random adjacent enemy. So it's like a cleave effect. You have to take damage first before, or, or rather, you know, Trigor has to take damage before the cleave is activated. The next ability is a speed one backlash. It is the next time an enemy damages an adjacent ally this turn, gain plus five attack and deal this Merc's attack damage to them. So this counterattacks when your neighboring units are attacked. So you want to put Trigor in the middle of two, as I see it, two like vital units, two um, maybe maybe Vulgin and Natalie Celine, maybe Samuro and Zyrella. Maybe Brucon and Malfurion, like the ones that they feel they need to kill very quickly. If you use Backlash and they focus down Trigor, it will just be a wasted turn for him and he'll probably just die doing nothing. So there's, there's some risk in this ability. The same can be said about Regrow Heads. <clears throat> this unit takes critical damage this turn. Uh, at the end of the turn, restore full health to this Merc. The ability has a speed of 4. So it goes fairly early in the fight. Um, he makes himself take critical damage. If he survives a turn, he goes back to full health. So, again, it's one that if they want to focus down Trigor, I feel like he'll die almost, uh, almost definitely he'll die. And it's a weird one to do if he's at full health. My takeaway from Trigor is it will take a skilled hand. If you're using these in a, a clumsy way, if you're not timing them right, to look very silly. He'll have like no effect. But a skilled hand who can anticipate his opponent's actions very, uh, very effectively might be able to really make Trigor shine. Uh, his equipment, Enthused Amber, Friendly Attack deals four more damage. I think that's on the cleave. I don't think it applies to just the initial attack. Uh, Razor Claw Backlash gives an additional four attack. That is attack to yeah yeah it attached to his base attack and it applies before the counter attack 
Nine attack is not bad. I wish this affected the cleave. Like, it would be nice if you could get attack to stack on and then hit with a big cleave. That seems really nice. But it does not. It's just a, just a base attack. This last one is regenerative scales, where uh, regrow heads restores 16 health the turn it is cast. So, again, it's a weird ability. You sort of have to play mind games almost, I think. A skilled hand will really make Trigor shine. My clumsy hand, I'm not so confident in, but we'll see. All right, the uh, final mercenary they're adding is Vanessa Van Cleef. Uh, she is the one who will be part of the Tavern Pass. She will not be available when the patch drops on the 30th. Her first, well, she is an epic protector. She is a pirate, not a human. Uh, the first ability is Burgle Barrage. It is a seven speed ability where she attacks an enemy, and if you combo it, she steals five attack from them. We've seen uh, attack debuffs with Sneed, but it never felt like it had that much of a, uh, a value. It felt, you know, not effective enough to use personally. However, Vanessa steals it, so she adds it to her own attack. Uh, and you can see with her next ability, makes weaponry. You can spend the, it's a speed three ability, and you can spend the stolen attack to deal that much damage to all enemies. I say you attack one turn, steal five attack, and then next turn you do this AoE. It's a five damage AoE, which feels very underwhelming. So if you wanted to do even 15 damage as an AoE, you have to attack twice. So you're relying on Vanessa attacking, taking damage, and then not being focused down and dying. So I don't know if this AoE attack, this makeshift weaponry, will ever be that good. You need to spend a few turns gaining attack, and then hoping she stays alive. So I'm not too sure about that one. Her third ability is Shifting Satchel. Speed 5 ability deals 16 damage to an enemy. That's already good enough. But the uh, cherry on top is you give plus one cooldown to an ability they did not use this turn. So this is the first ability that adds cooldowns or manipulates cooldowns. I think this has the potential to be very, very strong. I think that this enables you to disrupt an opponent's game plan. Not even just one turn, but you can disrupt, you know, uh, setting up a Cairn Diablo combo, setting up... Um, stuff that Malfurion does to speed things up. You can really disrupt their game plan. Uh, so I think this will be very strong, and I think this ability will make Vanessa, just on the strength of one attack, uh, very, very strong. Burgle Barrage, her equipment, Dead Blades. Burgle Barrage is four, faster, and always combos. Um, the problem with Burgle Barrage, the combo kind of makes it inefficient or... Uh, inconsistent and a little slow so this makes it have a three attack speed and always steals attack seems very strong makes that attack really good extra pockets after using makeshift weaponry this merc keeps up to five attack again now you're you're adding a small perk i think to the end of the system of stealing attack and then using this aoe i just don't it feels so slow to me and the payoff here is is not that exciting. Blade Catcher is whenever this Merc is attacked, steal four attack from the attacker. So it's an alternate way to gain lots of attack. She does not have Taunt, so I think your opponent can check her before the fight begins. You can hover over and it'll show you what equipment you're using, and if they see that you're using this equipment, they can decide to simply try to kill her with direct damage instead of attacks. Um, so you can sort of play around this one, I think. Overall, I feel like Burgle Barrage, or rather Dead Blades, is probably the most consistent and effective treasure for her. Um, it's a unique hero, certainly. Like, stealing attack and then delaying abilities by adding cooldowns is not stuff that we see in any other mercenaries. So she's very unique. Um, I think definitely that the cooldown adding adds a big time disruption so i think that she'll get played again it might take some skill to know how to use it correctly if you play her in a clumsy way maybe the cooldown payoff thing won't uh, you won't get the maximum effect from that that's all of the mercenaries they will be adding 
new bounties, which is cool. It gives you something different to do when you're doing that, that grind. Overall, uh, I'm really excited for Sky Admiral Rogers. Um, Valera, we'll have to see. Can she consistently punish those blue mercenary openers, those Vol'jin openers, or, you know, perhaps the nature ones? But even that, like, if you do a nature comp, I think the lowest health is on Malfurion, so she doesn't hit Brucon or Guff. She, she hits Malfurion in that comp. So there's some, like, ups up and downs with, um whether or not she can be that proactive green mercenary anyway the speed manipulation i think these are all very cool i think they'll have more impact than the pirate set did with dead mines i'm excited as always can't wait for the patch i hope you guys enjoyed my video thanks for tuning in and uh i'll see you next time take care